All right. So uh, this is the second part of our the same um, assignment. And we're given a table that says the number of passengers who's boarded a ship is modeled by the differentiable function P, where T is the number of hours since boarding began. Values P are given in the table below, and that's just the number of passengers. Now, according to the model, what's the average rate at which passengers board the ship? So if it says average rate, basically that's just talking about average rate of change, all right? And it says passengers per hour, so that means that we should be doing the p-values divided by the time values. Okay, so average rate of change on 1 to 8 would be the p-value at 8 minus the p-value at 1 all over 8 minus 1. The p-value at 8 is 728. The p-value at 1 is 35. So 8 minus 1 is 7. Now I have uh, 728 minus uh, 35. What is that? Uh, 693 maybe? Um, I'm doing that kind of quick. But, uh, but I think that's right. And then 693 divided by 7. 7 goes into that almost 10 times. So we're going to say 9 times. Uh, 9 times 7 is 63 with 6 remaining. And then 7 goes into 63 nine times. So we're getting 99 passengers. You want to uh, make sure that you always uh, keep up with the um, keep up with the units. Okay, passengers per hour. Okay, so the average rate of change from hour one to eight is 99 passengers per hour. Okay, so now this says write p prime at 4.5 as the limit of the difference quotient. Well, okay, use the data in the table to approximate 4.5, p of prime of 4.5 and show those computations. So, um, since this is so involved, I'm going to uh, write this separately down here at the bottom. B says I need to write p prime 4.5 as the limit of a difference quotient. All right, so if we're gonna do the limit of a difference quotient, it would either, it would be the limit as x approaches 4.5, I'm using the alternative definition of a limit, or I'm sorry, of a derivative. So then we'll say p of x minus p of 4.5 all over x minus 4.5. So this would be a fine answer um, as writing down the, the uh, limit of, a, as writing this down as the limit of a difference quotient. Now we're going to use the data to approximate p prime of 4.5. Well p prime at 4.5 would be the average rate of change between 3 and 6. So It'll be p of 6 minus p of 3 all over 6 minus 3. p of 6 in our table is 600. And p of 3 in our table is 204. 600 minus 200 is 400. So this is 390. I wrote that wrong. 396 over 3, which is 1, 3, 2. Okay, 132 what? Well, 132 passengers per hour, right? Still, um, still the same units as the, um, as the average rate of change. All right, um, so that's the second question. And now it says show the computations that lead to your answers, and I think we've done a fine job of that. Okay, so let's look at part C. Must there be a time between 3 and 6 at which P of T equals 500? Justify your answer. Well, this is a perfect example of uh, the intermediate value theorem. Well, first off with the intermediate value theorem, we have to say that uh, the function P is continuous. So, we're going to say P is continuous on 
3 to 6. Okay? P is continuous. You have to say that. Then what you're going to do is show that 500 is between P of 3 and P of 6. So you're going to say since P of 3 is, is 204, so that is less than uh, P of T, uh, we could say we're equal to, I think, uh, or 500, and then less than or equal to P of 6. Uh, the intermediate value theorem applies, okay? And what does it mean by it applies? Uh, basically, what it means is, there. So, um, maybe you say so, comma, um, there must exist a value, let's say um, t equals c, such that Uh, P of that C value, the output uh, would equal 500. Alright, so I'm well over my time limit now. I'm, I'm a minute and a half over. This is uh, six and a half minutes. So, um, sorry, it'll be under 10 then. Alright, so here we go. Uh, here's part D. Part D, I don't have any room up there, so we'll write down here. The total number of gallons of water used by the passenger ship is modeled by function G. Now G um, it has nothing to do with the passengers anymore. Well, okay, this is the number of gallons that they use, okay? So um, number of hours since uh, opening, uh, since boarding began. So find G prime of 4, the rate at which passengers use water in gallons per hour. Well, if G of T is 120t times the square root of t and you're looking to find g prime you could either use the product rule or in this case I think I would just simplify t root t I would just rewrite that as 120t times t to the half and then we're gonna add exponents so two halves plus one half would be 120t to the 3 halves. All right? So now g prime of t is going to be 120 times 3 halves times t, and then we're going to subtract 1. If we subtract 1, we'll get 1 half. All right? The 120 over 2 gives me 60. 60 times 3 is 180. 180 square root t. That is going to be g prime of t. But that's not exactly what they asked us for. They asked us for g prime of 4. So g prime of 4, remember don't write any more t's once you've written that. So 180 square root 4. So basically 180 times 2. And 180 times 2 is 360. And then you want to tell everybody what the units are. So 360 what? Well, g prime is a rate. It's a rate, meaning that it has something, uh, some measurement divided by another measurement, okay? So it's going to be in gallons per hour. Gallons, because G was in gallons, and T was in hours, so this is going to be gallons per hour. So it means at the specific moment, at four hours, uh, the passengers were using 360 gallons per hour. So I will zoom out just a little bit so that you guys can kind of see most of the paper anyway uh, there at the end. And um, you guys uh, feel blessed, uh, feel like you can uh, over, overcome this test. I think that you can. I think that you'll be very successful tomorrow if you followed uh, through this video. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you tomorrow.